Look at that bass trying to get it out of his mouth. He's like a five pounder trying to, look, look, look. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Guys, this is no joke. This is a giant. <laughs> look at that baby. The pipe right here. You guys ready for me to catch fish? I'm about to call it. Give me a few seconds, all right? Let me just stall you guys for a second. Waiting for that fish to bite. Yep. Gosh, look at that bass. Such a great fish. Thick and healthy. Hey, yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to another video. Today, we're hopping into it really quick because I do not want you guys to skip through. Don't skip through at any point in time because this is a really juicy video that you guys need to watch if you want to learn tips to catch more bass. So today, I'm going to be showing you three different ways or I'm, I say three, but it's probably gonna be more. I'm gonna show you a lot of tips on how to catch fish when it's super tough. Say it's super hot outside or the fish just aren't biting. It's just not going your way that day. I wanna teach you guys how to actually get bites and catch more fish, whether it's just you catching one more fish or whether you're just gonna start whacking them. Depending on the conditions of the day, depending on how the fish are gonna act, it's gonna be tough out there. And you're definitely gonna have those days where you go out fishing and it's just really, really hard to get a bite. So that's why I'm gonna be showing you guys these tips today. If you wanna see some more, tips for bass fishing be sure to leave a comment below on which tip video you would like to see next so this is what we're going to be doing today right here i have a drop trap box right here i have a little finesse worm box drop shot worm box i have some 10 pound fluorocarbon right here some pliers and a old spinning rod right here as you guys can tell on the spinning rod i have a simple little old ned rig right here and when these fish are tough I can tell you one thing, the best baits, if I could layer it down to three baits to throw, would be either a shaky head or a Texas rig, an old Ned rig, or a drop shot. Today I'm going to be tying on a drop shot and going out there because I believe that is the best bait to catch fish on when it is super tough outside. So I'm going to teach you guys how to rig one up. So if you guys are wondering, I actually have a Fate Black spinning rod right here, and the reel is actually a Creed GT, both by 13 Fishing. I have some braid to a fluorocarbon leader, and the fluorocarbon that I'm using is actually Seaguar and Vizx right here, that's 10 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon. Actually, I have a little Ned rig on, but we're going to cut this off with these old pliers just like that. Going to be getting everything to tie a drop shot, which I will show you guys. So I have just a little weight right there. Then I got just a little hook. I'm just going to be nose hooking the bait. I'm not going to be weedless hooking this thing. I'm just going to straight up nose hook this, this thing. I'm not, this isn't a video on how to rig up a drop shot, but I am going to show you guys very quick. This is what you're going to need to do. Make sure your hook is facing up when you put the line through. Go ahead and tie your knot. Make sure you have a long leader though. That's the key, a long leader. See how long that is? There ain't no games right there. You guys are wondering, I'm just tying a simple old uni knot. Cinch it down. This is a big key. So with your inline, this is actually way, way longer than it needs to be, but uh, it's better to be safe than sorry. You're going to take this end piece with your hook facing up, and you're going to go right back through the eyelid. What that's going to do is it's going to position this hook straight up. Let me show you guys. So as you guys can tell, that hook is perfectly up. So when you lift your rod or when you reel to hook that fish, the hook's going to go right into the top of his mouth rather than in that hook you know face sideways or face down see how perfect that is it's literally facing straight up and then the last little step we're gonna leave about a foot and four inches of we can do about 14 inches of line here right off the hook and we're gonna be putting our little lead drop shot weight on tie that bad boy up quick and simple right there next thing we gotta do is pick old old worm out there's one thing i would like to say if you guys want to see a full-on video on how to rig up a drop shot you know when to use which types of worms what worms are the best for a drop shot what do i usually use on my drop shot rig the colors that whole deal where to fish a drop shot then you guys need to leave a like on this video pepper that like button up also leave a comment below let me know that you want to see that because i need to know if i want to make a video that you guys are going to watch it so now it's time to pick out a worm as you guys can tell in here we have a bunch of little finesse worms keeping it very simple as you guys can tell we have a gooseberry color right here which is kind of like a june bug and purple great for dirty water we got an old green pumpkin green one of my favorite natural colors these are big ones we do not need that got some old watermelon ones right there plain and simple green pumpkin in that corner little old june bug uh, trick worms right here i'm just gonna keep it very basic very simple you guys can get these at walmart usually uh i'll put like a little robo worm on but we're just gonna keep it very basic and we're gonna be using the standard old june bug trick worm you can get these really anywhere that's why I'd rather use this for today's video. We're gonna be putting these in my pocket. I'm sure we're gonna go catch some fish. So you guys see that little hook right there? We got our hook, got our weight. Simply gonna nose hook this thing. Just like that. I'm gonna go right through the head. Just like that. 
That's nose hooked. Simple as that. A lot of action. It's not weedless. I'm gonna tell you that. So if you're fishing this in grass, you're gonna need a weedless hook. But that is your just simple clean drop shot rig right there with the June bug worm because it's slightly stained water out here. Let's go ahead and head down to the pond. So like I said, three baits. Shaky head, Ned rig, drop shot. I'm using a drop shot right now. I'm telling you, I just think it's the best way to catch fish when it's super tough outside. When it is just, you just cannot get a bite. I mean, it is so hot. You're throwing your crankbait or you're throwing your chatterbait. You're throwing top waters, whatever you're throwing. You just are not getting any bite. You cannot go wrong with a little drop shot. I'm telling you, you would just, a drop shot is one of the most finesse baits out there and you'll always catch them on it, I promise you. And I have a few different ways I want to show you guys to work this and especially on these days that these fish are just not biting. And that's what I want to go through today and go over and show you guys a few different ways to work this thing. I know a lot of you guys probably know some stuff about a drop shot, but I'm going to be talking about some different, some different things in this video rather than your basic, you fish a drop shot this way. I try to, in all these tip videos, I try to pretty much teach you guys different ways to catch fish on these baits rather than, you know, everyone on YouTube's telling you the top three ways but they're all basic you know i not not bashing anybody but i'm just saying i try to try to keep these a little bit more in detail and, and different than how other people do them it's crazy when every single person out there is doing the same thing and you switch it up on these fish you'll catch twice as many i promise you so i'm going to show you how to work these slow moving baits when it's tough so i'm going to take my bait this right now drop shot chug it out there all right, simple as that. Let that bait hit the bottom. Instead of sitting here and I'm in popping my rod like this, pop, 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 pop. Instead of really just twitching that bait, and, you know, just reeling in my reel like this and popping my rod, you know, those fish can be super, super, super finicky. You might just want to dead stick that thing. So you're just gonna throw that thing out there and let it sit. You know, drink, drink a cup of coffee, do whatever you have to do. Every once in a while, I just kind of barely drag that thing. Just let it sit. I've thrown about 10 casts so far, I haven't had a bite. And I haven't fished it like this. So I'm gonna show you guys that this works. Barely drag this big. Don't let your line slack. What that's doing with this drop shot, is you have your weight, you have your worm, and then it's connected to your rod. So what happens is when your line all the way tightened up and you're filling that bait, you're moving that bait on the bottom, that bait is shifted off the ground. When you let that line slack and you just let that line fall like this, what that's gonna do is that bait is just gonna slowly fall to the ground. And then when you tighten your line back up, it's gonna shoot that bait right back up. It's gonna slowly fall. So you're really not doing much with it. All this is doing is simply just coming up, but it's not really moving. It's not like you're sitting here, boom, 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 twitching, hopping, doing every single thing you can to hop that worm all over the place. Because some days, this fish night might, I'm telling you, they might not want it like that. It's gonna be, you're gonna have those days where it's tough. So that is one major tip, is when you're throwing these slow moving baits, Sometimes you're just gonna want a dead stick. Throw it out there and just let that thing sit and those fish will pick it up. Another thing when it's super, super, super hot outside, you're gonna wanna look for that cover that those fish are gonna be hiding on. When it's super hot, what's gonna happen is that sun's out, you know, you got your bluebird skies, you don't got much wind, those fish are not roaming there, you're hiding under docks, they're hiding on those trees, on those rock piles. That is another big thing that you need to keep in mind. If it is super hot outside, super sunny, those fish are not moving around a lot. They're not super active. You're gonna need to be seriously fishing that stuff real good. So whether it's some lay downs in the water, whether it's a big old rock pile, whether you're fishing a ledge, a big old road bed, I mean, whatever it is, that is a big thing as well. Those fish are not always gonna be active. My camera actually just died, but what I was saying is pretty much fish all that cover. I mean, fish that stuff real good. And I'm not talking, you know, one casting on those trees or on that rock pile. I'm talking multiple casts. You have a little rock pile, you have a brush pile out here, you have a lay down in the water. You might need to throw three to 10 casts at that thing before you get that fish to bite. And I've seen it happen multiple times. This ain't just something I'm talking about. You know, you think if you see a little limb in the water, a little tree, like I'm just talking like a little branch, whatever it is hanging down in the water that you pitch by it once, you just flip right up next to it, that you think a fish is gonna bite it the first time. That's what you would, you know, that's what you would think. But in reality, you know, when the fishing's tough, you're gonna have to throw up there three, four times, fish it at different angles, you know, throw at the end of that tree, throw on the side of that tree, throw on the other side, throw on the back of it, to, and do whatever it takes for that fish. Cause you might need to put it in front of his face literally three times for him to get it. And this goes for moving baits as well. I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to throw, say you're slow rolling a little chatter bait off some lay downs in the water. And I wouldn't hesitate to throw that thing a few times at all. Fish do not seem to be biting here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna be moving locations. I still wanna show you guys some fish and you know, pretty much prove the tips that I'm spilling your way. I believe, you know, when I'm talking about these tips and everything in these tip videos, I need to be catching fish as well to show you guys that they actually work. So we're gonna head to a different location, see if we can get them to bite this old drop shot. 
So this is going to be the best tip of the video so far. So you guys need to watch this part. This is very important. <laughs> this is some, some secret juice. This is something that no one's told you on the internet. And I promise you because I've taught myself it. I don't think anyone else does it. You got your little drop shot. So as you can tell, you have the weight on the bottom, hook in the middle. There's a pipe right out here that I'm about to throw in front of. I'm gonna show you a way to work this bait if it's super tough that it will guarantee you to get that fish that's hanging around that pipe or to get that fish that's hanging around that tree or to get that fish that's actually on bed. I'm, I'm telling you, watch this. I'm pitch that bait out there, let it hit to the let it hit the bottom. Instead of dragging that bait in, I'm gonna simply just start knocking the end of my rod. I actually had a video on this years ago. It's just gonna slide, what it's gonna do, and the reason why I like to do this with a drop shot is because that bait does not move at all, literally. Because that weight, what happens is that weight's on the bottom, and when you're bopping your rod, that bait's just twitching, and the weight's holding it down. So the bait literally stays in the same spot. So what happens is you flip up next to a tree, and you start tapping your rod, and this bait's not even coming towards you. It's just staying still, barely wiggling. So if that fish is nosed up to it, even if he's finicky, he doesn't want to bite it. I'm telling you, you just sit there and keep hitting that thing. If you know there's a fish there, he'll eventually eat it. I'm, it's, it's really crazy once you try it out a few times. It's a decent one. Freaking decent one. Look at him tugging. Look at him freaking tugging. There we go. I mean, what did I tell you guys? I showed you guys that right there. That is a beautiful bass right there. Look at that, guys. That is not a bad one. As you guys can tell, hooked him right there in the top of the mouth. Gosh, what a pretty fish. You cannot beat that. It's a solid pound and a half, pound and three quarters. So let's get a release on this guy and we'll talk about what just happened. Let's get him back in the water. There we go, baby. That's what's happening. I literally just showed you guys what I was talking about. I knew there was a fish on that pipe. I sat there just bopping into my rod. Felt him barely pick that thing up. It was game over from there. It was game over. I'm telling you, when those fish are super finicky, but you know they're in a certain piece of cover, whether it's a tree, a brush pile, whatever it is, and they're just not eating, that is a way to catch those fish, is to gently tap your rod on the bottom. But when you're doing this, you have to have your line. You can't have slack in your line. You gotta have your line tight, bopping the end of it just like that. Let's keep that bait still. Yep, yep. Oh my God. Oh. He ain't that big, but golly. I'm about to say, right there with that wind pushing up in this corner, it had to be a fish there. Just threw it right in there and he ate it. Look at that guy. That is fun right there, guys. On an old drop shot. Look how hard he was fighting. God, <laughs> look at that. As you guys can tell, there's a little corner in this pond, just a small little corner. And what's going on is there's a lot of wind right now. And that wind is just pushing up perfectly in that corner, which is gonna push a lot of bait. You know, there's gonna be some fish sitting in this corner 100%. That's right where he was. I'm convinced, I, I promise you there's another one here. We can just get him to bite. By working that drop shot super, super slow, getting it in front of his face and enticing him to bite it. And if I can't get him to bite, exactly what I was talking about, just popping the back of the rod, keeping that bait in the same position and just barely wiggling it so they pick it up. It right away that was just insane what am i doing never move the bait you just had it look at that right in the back of his throat literally never move the bait you guys saw that just pitched it in there click my reel you already had it gosh it's a stubby fish right there all right buddy you're fat but you gotta you gotta get a little bigger body on you that was a perfect, I mean perfect demonstration of what I was talking about earlier. I was pretty much talking about how area like this, whether it's a pipe, a tree, whatever it is, there's going to be multiple fish on it that you need to make multiple casts. Well, after I caught that first fish, <laughs> after I caught that first fish, I cast it at least another 10 times without a bite. And then I flipped right up in there, pitched right up in there. Boom, he ate it. Just shows how you're going to have to cast, I'm telling you, a lot. It's not going to be an easy job. This fish can be down there, you just don't know it because... You could reel by so many fish during a day. And if you're fishing something obvious like this, like there's a little pipe in this corner and there's wind pushing back right here. There's a pipe right here. You guys ready for me to catch fish? I'm about to call it. Give me a few seconds, all right? Let me just stall you guys for a second. Waiting for that fish to bite. Yep. I mean, you just gotta know where they're at guys you gotta be a fish wizard 
Hashtag fish wizard. Hashtag fish wizard below. This bass could eat that guy. Oh my god. That's freaking dangerous. Look how dark this fish is. That one. That is a dark fish right there. Right there in the top of his mouth every single time. Gosh. Feisty guys. That is a thick, healthy fish. Small guy. Dark colors. I mean, these guys are healthy though. I can tell you that one. Goes, baby. Another guy. Oh, he's got two of them with him. Oh, look at oh, look at that bass trying to get it out of his mouth. He's like a five pounder trying to look, look, look. Oh my god, are you guys witnessing this? Look at the big one chasing him. I don't know if you guys are witnessing this. There's like a five pounder behind. Look at him. Do you guys see that? There's a freaking five pounder trying to eat him. He came off. Oh man, I was gonna let that big fish eat him. There was at least a five pounder trying to fit him in head first. I don't know if you guys saw that on camera. He was like tailing him, trying to eat him. That was crazy. He was literally, dude, that fish was huge. I don't know if you guys saw him, but I could see him with my glasses. The fish was on the hook and the guy was just trying to eat him head first. So I was gonna let him if it was gonna happen. And get that on camera would be crazy. Oh my gosh. Guys, this is no joke. This is a giant. I'm not even kidding. I can't believe that. I, I promise you guys, I was five plus right there. It, I'm minimal. That, I couldn't even move that fish. He was tugging. I can't believe that. He just came unbuttoned. Of course, the small ones get hooked good. And there's some 10 pounders that have been caught out of here. I mean, for all I know, he could be. I'm going to shoot him at a five plus, though. I don't know the number of them, but he's a minimal five. I promise you that's how heavy he was. He wasn't pulling my drag either, so I thought my drag was too tight, but. Oh my God. I don't think he's that big, but oh gosh, four pounder, three pounder, best one yet, about a three, golly guys, <laughs> look at that baby, look at that, gosh there's some fish out here biting today, solid three pounder right there, oh man look at that beautiful fish right there is having it today baby pepper that like button up we're not gonna stop we're gonna continue to throw there i just lost a giant and then hook this guy the big ones are biting today let's get him in the water gosh look at that bass such a great fish thick and healthy i could tell he was a lot smaller than that last night other one's definitely five plus 100 percent then i hooked this one that's a small one I mean, the fish are just stacked there. It's, all, it's every cast. That's the type of areas that you want to fish. Right there. This hasn't even, this has turned in from like a tip video to a straight fishing video. But if you guys don't mind that now, I'll throw a little tips here and there. I might as well just continue to catch them. All right, everyone. Well, that is going to conclude this video. If you guys enjoyed this tip video, be sure to pepper that like button up. I mean, pepper that thing. If you guys want to see some more drop shot tips, if you want to see a like designated drop shot video, then let me know in the comment section below. Be sure to pepper it up. Also, I hope you guys learned some tips about when the fishing's super tough, what to throw, and more importantly, how to work the bait, and more importantly, where to throw the bait. If you guys want to see some more videos like this, like I said, let me know in the comment section below, people. Also, hit that little red subscriber button and hit the little bell right next to it so it sends you post notifications, and I will catch you guys in the next video. I got sky like the weatherman, uh I cry cars, get hella bears, uh I got a bra from the motherland, uh I got shooters with hands, uh I get it, get it, uh Anyway, uh Pull up skirt in the hurricane, uh I crack cars, cook every day, uh I get money, uh Every day, uh